Hello friends, and welcome to the Hanged Man in the Moon. Look what came in the mail. Look what came in the mail. Now, let me tell you, this is a deck that I have wanted for almost two years. Um, I saw it on another person's channel about two years ago, and I fell in love with it. And as I fell in love with it, I also fell into anguish because it was out of print. And I was told that the creator had passed away. And so I had very few hopes that I would be able to have this in my hands. And then I believe the creator's son decided to reprint this deck. This is the Tildwick Tarot. And it's a very unique tarot. And it's a tarot that has no people and is all... you. Interiors. Interiors that express the qualities or the feel of each tarot card. So, I don't know the deck deeply, and I feel that I'm going to require some deep study to really get this deck, to really be able to feel confident reading with this deck, but I also remember that this is a gorgeous deck, a beautiful deck beautifully designed, and beautifully created. So, if you're interested in seeing what's inside for yourself, stay tuned. I'll flip the camera around and we'll dive in together. Let's take a look at the Tildwick Tarot. I love it. Hello friends, I am so excited to get into this deck. I told you, I think, that I have been waiting for this deck for a long time. So, <clears throat> with no further ado, let's get inside of here. Um, I've not opened this yet, but I did bring a couple of tools just in case. Okay, so, here is the box. Dun, da, da, dun. The Tildwick Tarot, second edition. So, okay, so let's start with the box. This box is beautiful. Look at the colors. Let's see, can you see? Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. Let me get a little bit closer in on these cards because they are going to be gorgeous. Um, so, yes, this is basically the style of this deck. Now, they're interiors of rooms, architectural interiors. And right from the first image on the top of the box, I love it. Um, beautiful box, uh, thumb tabs for two-part box. Let me open, okay, I'm going to do this off camera so you don't get scared <laughs> by my use of an X-Acto knife to get into this deck. And here we go. The plastic is off. And the box is even more beautiful. Do we have... No, there is not much glare there. Now, you can see, this is like a, a fireplace, right? Um, and here are two figures on the fireplace. And, and a clown figure in the mirror above. So I wonder, is this the devil card? And there's a dog right there. What card is that? Let's see. Oh, and there are butterflies as well. See, there's so much to see in these cards, in this deck. That's the reason I wanted to get this deck, and I've wanted this deck for a long time. So, here we go. Here is a plastic band around the cards. Let's get rid of the plastic band, and I will get rid of the box. The box, it's sturdy. It's very sturdy. But there's no particular design element on the inside of the box, which is fine. Um, <laughs> oh, look at this gilding. Okay, so this is definitely gilding, copper gilding. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Okay, and here is the back. Here are the backs. Yes. Um, just like the 
back of the box, only just a little bit clearer. I love these backs. I love the design of the backs. I love the color palette of the backs. The size of the deck, just in case you're curious, this is my Pam's Delight, which is a standard tarot size, and they are standard tarot size, standard size. And the thickness of the cardstock. Um, the Pam's Delight is a little bit on the thick, the heavy side. It's, no, I'm sorry, thin side, I should say. It's a thin but very sturdy card, and these cards are a little bit thicker. Um, if you were to look at them side by side, yeah, you can see that, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Tildwick Tarot is just a little bit thicker than the Pam's Delight, which is a pretty standard cardstock for a uh, standard US games. It's not US games. It is a privately published deck, but the cardstock is similar to US games. And you can see the Tildwick is thicker. Okay, so let me get this straightened back out again for all of our enjoyment. And let's look at the front card. There is no guidebook to this deck. Yeah. Um, here we have Neil Lovell, 17, 1971 to 2018. The flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. This was definitely true for Neil, a gifted artist and scholar with a particular interest in languages and cultures. During a business trip to the Middle East, he amazed his boss by chatting almost fluently with, a taxi, with the tra taxi driver saying, I thought I should learn a few words. This is just one of the stories of Neil's life that only came to light after his passing. He would delight everyone with colorful stories from his travels, complete with accents, making the characters involved, uh, involved alive for the listener but rarely speak for himself. So Neil Lovell, the Tildwick Tarot. So here we go. Okay, so that card is the Fool card. Okay, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, we have a traditional Fool-like image in the mirror. There are no humans in this deck, and I believe there are no animals per se. I mean, these butterflies, I think, are decorative butterflies. So the fool with a dog. Okay, so we've got that image right there. Let's look at the next card. The magician. The magician. Okay, so what do we have? We've got a table. We Do we have the elements? We have a knife. We have a, which would be the swords. We have a cup. We have a disc. And it looks like there's a wand here. So yeah, the magician. I'm it's. I'm very glad that there is a title to this card. I probably would get confused in a reading if I did not have the title on here. But look at the colors of this card. Look at this color scheme. Let's see. Do I? Can I get a little bit closer? Let me bring you in just a little bit closer, so you really, really get a sense of these cards. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to the M High Priestess. And here we have yeah, a kind of High Priestess-looking figure with two pillars. Do we have a moon? We've got, I guess we've got a moon here. Yeah? There, are, there are pillars here. There could be that kind of veil feeling behind. Sure. Love the furniture. <laughs> Love the furniture in this deck. Here we are with the Empress. Okay, look at the greens. Look at the tree-like elements. This is like a garden, an exterior or maybe even interior painted, but a garden. Yeah, there are flowers here below and a garden goddess. So yes, they're architectural. They, they may not all be interiors. Ah, oh, the emperor, look at that structure, yeah? Um, we've got a globe, an orb, yeah, a globe here, uh, books, but very structured, very orderly. 
a very emperor-like card. Uh, you could see the emperor sitting here and giving orders. Structure. Okay. Am I going to keep them face up or going to turn them over? Please decide, Mr. Thomas. Okay, here we go. The Pope. The Pope. Or the Hierophant. But here, the Pope. And, yeah. Ch uh, cathedral, interior, uh, religious figure, probably a Pope. Makes complete sense to me. Um, is there a key? I can't, it's hard to see. You can perhaps see the image a little better on camera than I'm seeing it live. Um, but look at the colors. The colors are gorgeous, aren't they? I don't see a key right offhand, but definitely a Pope. Okay, so let's look at the lovers. Here we have two... Okay, interesting. We have two cam cameos, two portraits here. And then... A central figure here, reminiscent of the lover's structure. You have three people, but not people, images, a statue and two pictures. And then a goddess behind. Perhaps Venus, perhaps not. Um, need to study this deck a little bit more. The cards are a matte finish, yeah? So that you're not getting much glare, are you? You're not getting any glare, I believe. Here we are with a matte finish. Beautiful. Here's the chariot. Um, here we have the two sphinxes or the two creatures pulling the chariot normally. This would normally be the human in the chariot, but all architectural. And the world in a tapestry behind. Gorgeous. And here we have justice at... Justice is eight. Okay, so... Strength will be 11 in this deck. Justice. Here we have the scales. A very feminine looking justice card, right? I mean, as far as... Okay, so feminine. What many people would commonly associate to characteristics of femininity are you know, these flowers, this kind of um, Queen Anne style art, uh, furniture, perhaps. Um Beautiful. Not male, not female, but that softer feeling, which is often, sometimes, well, not often, but sometimes associated with justice. I don't know. Okay, moving on. The herm, okay, here we have the hermit. The hermit. Um, okay, here's the light. Here's the lantern. The hermit. This looks like an exterior card to me, but it could be a seller. It could be anywhere. That would be interesting if this were a cellar, wouldn't it? Yeah, the hermit in their cell. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, here we have... Oh, look at that. The Wheel of Fortune. This looks like another garden wall. Yeah, there's a fountain on the outside. The fountain perhaps turning the wheel for us. And here we have a figure here. We have a figure here. Are there four figures? I don't see four figures, but... I might need to inspect this a little bit more carefully. There is definitely a figure on top here. Interesting, interesting. Here we have fortitude instead of strength. Fortitude. And okay, here's a lion. There's a lion head. Um, I'm suddenly reminded for no good reason of the Boca de Verita in uh, Rome. The mouth of truth, which is the lion's head that you'd stick your hand in and um, see if you're a liar. <laughs> um, you know that Boca de Veritas, don't you? <laughs> if you don't, um, look it up online. So anyways, here's a, a lion figure. Hmm. Okay, so the hanged man. Definitely... Definitely an upturned male human. Um, interesting that there's that, that ball thing below. I don't know the name of that game, but you know the one where there are four or five or six balls lined up, on suspended, suspended, suspension, right? Suspended on a wire, and you pull one back and knock it in, and it, they, that, um, 
they move, right? Uh, so yeah, suspend, uh, suspension, a, a reiteration of that idea of suspension, perhaps. The design elements on all of these cards are gorgeous. The colors are gorgeous. Um, and they take deep contemplation, I believe. This is going very quickly, I believe. Death. Well, okay, so good. Similar to a Marseille deck, this is card 13. There is no title, but we have the skeleton here. We have an organ, perhaps like a funeral organ, perhaps. Uh, the skeleton is holding a scythe. There is a clock here, the sense of time. I'm curious what this is. I'm curious about that. Okay, so here we are with temperance and we have the figure. Um, okay, the figure has two different colors to their tunic or their, yeah, their tunic, a red side and a white side, which is common for um, some uh, interpretations of the temperance card, having a two colored, a colored uh, tunic. Um, and white and red seem to be common associations as well. White wine, red wine, water, blood. And here are figures up in the top, kind of like a fresco, columns. Beautiful. This seems rather church art styled to me. To me. Um, here we are with the devil. Why is this the devil? Here are two figures and a mirror for us, perhaps. Oh, here we go. Here is the goat's head on top. Yes. But a, ref a mirror. I think that's a good choice for the devil, to see ourselves reflected in that space. Interesting. Here we are with the tower. And in the picture with these masks of, from very different cultures, um, a Japanese looking mask, a Greek looking mask, perhaps African masks, uh, Aztec perhaps mask. I don't know. I can't tell you which cultures they're from. I know that they're different. Um, and I'd need to look at, oh gosh, now I really, really, really wish there were a guidebook. Um, but yeah, here we have a tower looking like the tower of Babel from biblical description, some in artistic interpretations of the tower of Babel, which gets destroyed by a bolt of lightning from God at the human's hubris. Here we are with the star card. Look at that. Here we have, okay, on the vase, there is a figure, I think, pouring water. And there's water pouring into the jug, into the vase. Wow, and these flowers. Here we are with the moon. Okay, what do we have here? What do you see? I see the crustacean. I see the lobster coming up from the depths. I see an orb, perhaps a moon figure here, two towers. Um, are these animals on the side? Are they the canines? I'm having trouble seeing them right now, perhaps. Oh yes, they are canines. Looking at them in the camera, I can see more clearly. These are the heads of the canines pointing in. Wow, look at that. You notice the different hues for each of the card. I'm sure that those hues, the color palette for each card is specifically chosen. The moon, a very cool card. The sun, a very hot colored card with sunflowers. And it looks like a Buddha, a Buddha figure perhaps, or maybe a Shiva figure, um, but with a Helios in the background. Lovely. And do you notice the sunflower vase for the sunflowers? Isn't that lovely? Oh, gorgeous. Oh, and look at this judgment card. Okay, so we have some art above with figures in it. We have uh, looking like a, a home chapel, perhaps, an angelic figure inside of a... Uh, uh, 
oh, I forget the name of this, where something you would hold the Eucharist inside. Perhaps, but no, the, a Eucharist would not be reserved inside of a home. Mm, okay, I, mm, I need to think about this a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we've got an angel here calling, trumpeting, it looks like. We've got figures here in cases that may want to rise up. We have a perhaps a heavenly court above. Here we have the world, and we do have a figure, um, a dancing Hindu figure in a round, wreathed disc. We have three solids, the pyramid, triangle, the sphere, the square. Wow, look at that. It looks like we've got a Taurus up here and a lion. Now, is perhaps one of these an eagle and one of them an angel? Perhaps. That would be cool if it were. Let me see if I can see better in the camera. Um, I'm not seeing it clearly in the camera either. But probably, my guess is that this is probably the, uh, the eagle and this is probably the angel. But I think we've got those figures here as well. Okay, ace of coins right into the pentacles to start off with. Here we have an ace of coins. Here we have the two of coins. And we have that sense of balance, right? This cord is balancing, holding this up on these two coins or these two discs. Here we have the three of coins. A cooperative work of art, perhaps. Very pippish. Much. These are more pippish than they are, I believe, um, Marseille style. They're pippish. Uh, or pips, actually. Well, except that, let's see, where are the a one, two, three, four? Okay, so we do have a four coins here. Interesting that the. This is a zodiac chart with a. Chart of 12, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. 16 squares in the middle. A very stable number, 16. 4 of 4. Hmm, okay. So here we are with the 5 of coins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, outside of a door. So is... Okay, so the, gar the garden looks a little bit unkempt. It looks like an unkempt area. Can we see perhaps that right away Smith uh, uh, lack here, lack of tending, needing tending, needing care? Perhaps, perhaps. Six of coins, six coins here. Um, transactional, perhaps. This looks this looks to me like the door to a crypt, but not quite sure how that would relate to the six of coins offhand. Um, hmm. Okay, so seven of coins. We got them here. Uh, yes, this deck is definitely going to require some study on my part. I'm not coming up with immediate interpretations very easily. The eight of coins, which would be eight of coins in uh, uh, right away. Smith would be the uh, tasks working, doing things. Um, is this figure doing things? I don't quite know. I don't see the doing of things so much in this card. Um, yeah, need to study that. Here we are with the nine of coins. Nine of coins. Um, where are the nine coins? Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Okay, so we've got two sets of nine coins on the door. Um, and looks like nine trunks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trunks. So satisfaction, perhaps, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Ten of coins. Okay, here we have that tree of life image from the Rider Waite Smith and from um, many other decks. But the Rider Waite Smith particularly emphasizes the coins in this tree of life pattern. Interesting. 
Okay, let's move on to the page of coins. Okay, we've got an exterior uh, garden. The knight of coins, an interior with a fig. Okay, so there are figures. Okay, so I see there is a youngish figure, a, a face in this portrait. There's a small portrait of perhaps a knightish figure here. The queen of coins. Here's a, an, a face here in this thriving garden looking fountain. Here we have a perhaps a pond in front. And here we have the king of coins looking like a greenhouse to me a little bit. Maybe not but looking to me a little bit like a greenhouse, which would kind of make sense for the king of coins, wouldn't it? And here we have a portrait in the disc here. And moving on to the ace of cups, here we have our singular cup radiating. A very cool card. So yes, the coins are this color. They were all this color, right? This kind of brownish color. The Coins, I believe, are all going to be this aqua-ish color in tone. Two of cups as well. One, two cups. Um, love? Eh, maybe not. <laughs> three of cups, which is, here we go, three of cups. Um, the Rider Waite Smith would have three women holding cups, three of a little bit different. Uh, sharing emotionally, sharing their experience, sharing and collaborating emotionally. Don't really see that here, but I'm going to hopefully be in a study group for these decks. For this deck, I mean. Four of Cups. Interesting, yes? We have a tapestry looking like a hunting tapestry in the background. Four very different cups in the front. Here we have the five of cups and one, two, three, four, five cups on an exterior mausoleum, it looks like to me. Five of cups, um, disappointment in Rider right Waite Smith. Maybe you can read that here, perhaps. Six of cups, um, childhood memories. Yeah, okay, you can see a little watering bucket, which might remind you of memories, by the sea, is that a seaside? Playing in the sand with a water bucket, perhaps? Seven of cups, dreams, images, daydreaming. Perhaps. This looks like an exterior, um, let's see, uh, pre-Victorian, uh, Edwardian perhaps? Uh, English garden with follies, perhaps. Hmm. Here we go with the eight of cups, and we have eight flower pots, which would be dis leaving things behind, moving forward out of dis in distress, severe disappointment. Um, yeah, these look like they've seen better days, I suppose. Sure. Here we are with the Nine of Cups, another satisfaction, and these cups are perfume bottles. Okay, that kind of works, doesn't it? Perfume, satisfaction, that sense of oh, sensory satisfaction, satisfaction in the, instead of alcohol, in scent, in fragrance. And here we go with the Ten of Cups, often a family. This would be enough, perhaps a family room, uh, memories within a chest. Ten vessels of memories. They're all different. Here we are with the page of cups, and here we have another portrait. Yes? And the knight of cups, another portrait. Looking romantic, perhaps? Okay, do we see similarities of flowers here as well? Okay, these flowers look similar. Perhaps these are similar flowers. 
Interesting. Is this bird real or is it a decorative element? Here we are with the King of Cups. Here's the portrait and these flowers look very similar. So maybe looking at the flowers in the court cards is going to be important. Here we are with this Ace of Staves. Singular stave on a tile background. Doesn't look very alive, doesn't it? does it? Here we are with the two of staves. They look like thistles to me. And a very orange suit, right? This, this wands is a very orange toned suit in this deck. The three of staves. Here's the ship. Usually in the three of wands card, there are ships on the ocean in the background. And here's a ship. Um, do we have three staves here? I don't see the actual wands in this card. Are they hidden there somewhere? If you see them, point them out to me. Here we are with the four of staves. Here are four paintbrushes. Interesting. Four of wands. Um, usually a card of a celebration. But this looks more like an eight of, of coins cup to me. This looks like a, a, a honing your craft kind of card or maybe expression. I don't know. But this is the four of staves. The painter's palette and four brushes. Here we have the five of staves. We have five of them, yes. Uh, five of wands is usually competition. And here's a competition. Yeah, a Greek uh, sporting event competition. That works. I can see that there. This one's not too difficult to read for me. Uh, here we are with the six of staves, which is usually success. And here we have the laurel wreath. And then we have six columns here instead of uh, instead of actual wands or staves. But yeah, you could see that triumphal feeling here. Would have been nice if perhaps there were a triumphal arch, but you can get that sense of triumph and success here. The seven of staves, often defending oneself. Oh, and here's a little seven soldiers be for the, standing in for the staves. That could be very defensive, right? A defense, defensive stance. Here are the eight of staves, arrows. And remember in the Rider Waite Smith, there are eight wands flying through the air, and these would be flying through the air. And is this the target? Perhaps that's the target. Looks like the target to me. And here we are with the nine of staves, the nine of wands. Um, usually ah, resilience, standing up. I don't see where the staves are in this card. They're probably there, but I don't see it off right offhand. Um, hmm, interesting. Yep, this one needs more study on my part. <laughs> Don't see it right off bat. Here we are with the Ten of Staves, usually a burden card. And here we have an axe in a wood. Okay, now this is interesting. This is almost perhaps a little bit humorous. In the Rider Waite Smith card, you see usually uh, often a male, masculine looking, a male looking figure, not necessarily male, but a male looking figure carrying 10 very large sticks towards a castle, perhaps for firewood or to build with, but perhaps for firewood. And here you have perhaps the ax and the chopping block that you would use when you got them all there and you still have to chop them up to be able to use them. And perhaps this is the, the firewood here. How many, how many brown? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, okay, so we've got 10 brown logs, very brown logs in this set of logs. Okay, I get it. I get this one. I get this one now. Okay, here we go with the page of staves. And here's a very, very young looking portrait here. So let's see, are these trees going to be in the night? of staves no okay no we do have dragons here in both these flowers are not the same here but we do have dragons let's look at the queen do we have dragons in the queen if there are dragons i don't see them let me stand up and look at the camera I do not see dragons in the camera either. If you see dragons, tell me. 
Um, there are two animals up here, but they're not dragons, I don't think. Okay, so what is the unifying element? What is the unifying element? Here's those, here are those red flowers again. Uh, here are swans. Not dragons, but there are swans. And again, of course, there are portraits here in the cards. A trumpet. That's interesting. I wonder, trumpet blowing, blowing your horn, that call, the call of passion, perhaps. Just flowing with it here, guy, fellows and gals, just flowing with what I'm seeing. I have no idea right now. Here we have the Ace of Swords, a sword in front of a tile background. And so this, the Aces are a very cool brown, yeah, a very cool brown. The staves, the wands are a very orangey color, yeah. The water, the cups card were a very blue-green. And the pentacles were a darker brown, a dark brown. And this is a tannish brown, a cooler brown. Two of swords. Okay, so choices, perhaps. Don't know. Oh, here are two swords right here in the birdcage. Looking like a little bit of like a Marseille. Marseille. Two of swords. Interesting, interesting choice. Three of Swords. This also looks like a Marseille Three of Swords. Here we have the Four of Swords. Now the swords in this deck all look like very Marseille swords. So an interesting combination, an interesting choice. Stability. Perhaps. Okay. Stability in the chair. The chair lends stability to the user and mobility. Five of swords. Here's the five of swords right there. Interesting that the five, the swords suit is the one that really looks like it's drawing from a Marseille style. Let's see. Six of swords. Can we, there are the six swords right there in the middle. Very difficult to see, but they're there, there. They're there, bear. Uh, Globe, globe, interesting. Travel, moving on, maybe. Seven of swords, Where, there are the seven right there. And a scarab, a beetle. Hmm. Eight of swords, okay, so this is usually the trapped card in a Rider Waite Smith deck. And yeah, that I could see being trapped. But is there the Marseille eight buried in here somewhere? Can you find, where's Waldo? <laughs> Where are the eight swords? Do you see them? I do not see them. If you see them, right below, where did you see the swords? I don't see them off back, offhand. The only one I don't see those swords in. Here we have, here's the nine. I see the nine here. And a figure looking weighed down with Rider Waite Smith worries and anxiety. And yet we have a figure of a nine of swords, which would be very different in a Rider Waite Smith deck. And here we have the 10 swords, just like in a Marseille deck. Interesting. They look sort of like a watermark, don't they? In this card. And what is that? Is that a... A Yanni? No, it's not a Yanni, I don't think. Is it a, like a jade, a jade? A jet or an obsidian uh, tower? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Moving on to the Page of Swords. Here we go. Here is the figure. Let's check the next one to see if there is any alignment. Do we see... Okay, so I see dragons again here. Don't see dragons here. Interesting. Huh. Peacock feathers. Peacock feathers. Okay. So it would be interesting to line those cards up, to like line up the cork cards in a square. And I might do that. I might come back and do that to see how they look together. Um, here's the Queen of Swords portrait and the king of swords portrait here we have more peacock feathers here 
Do we have peacock feathers here? We have peak. No, those are flamingos and harps. I don't. Do you see peacocks? I don't see peacocks or peacock feathers here. Maybe here. I don't know. Okay, so, okay, so let's look at this last card. The design elements of this research work slowly began to take over his work time, and he used these new skills to revisit Tarot after first designing the Nijinsky while at Oxford as a distraction from his classical, classic studies. It would take over three years, but eventually his first proper tarot deck was created. The Tildwick Tarot was an instant success, and Neil soon found praise pouring from the four corners of the world. It is in his memory that this second edition has been produced. I too have received so much support from all of you following Neil's sudden passing, and ah, from all of you following Neil's sudden passing, and I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you. Gone but not forgotten. So yes, the creator has passed on. And that is the Tildwick Tarot. So, um, let, I'll be right back. Let me take a picture of the court cards all lined up and see if we can see anything. Just a moment. I'm sorry, before I do that, let me shuffle this a little bit so that we can see what it looks like in action. Um, as I said, this is a matte cardstock. They're very slippy. Um, the gilding again is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, let me show you how they shuffle. Okay, so there is a split in here. Um, that is a little bit pronounced right off bat, but I'm sure that will, that will solve itself in use. So, okay, so again, I'm going to try shift shuffling this deck. I'm not going to shuffle in reversals at this time. Let's see how it shuffles. Oh, okay, so it's a little bit stiff right now, and I have one, two cards upside down. <laughs> it's a little bit stiff right now, but it sh riffle shuffles beautifully. Um, the gilding makes the edges just a little bit sharp. Whoa, I'm sorry. Let me pull these out a little bit. Okay, so the gilding makes these a little edges a little bit sharp, but again, they riffle shuffle and bridge nicely as well. Considering these cards are flexible but still stiff. So how do they how do they overhand? Let me see how they overhand. I'm not the greatest overhand shuffler, for especially for decks that are a little bit slippery. They tend to go flying on me. Um, but yeah, this shuffle overhands very nicely. Let me do that once more. Now they don't clump at all. They move very smoothly. You hear that rustling sound of nice matte cardstock? So let me pull a card for us, for a collective. And then I'll go to the court cards and take a look so we can see what the court cards look lined up. See if we can see anything in them. Here we go, a card for us right now, at this moment in time of filming is okay it's upside down um the eight of swords interesting so i think this card is challenging us to break out of our self-imposed views our self-imposed negative thoughts about perhaps the world perhaps um, life in general, but perhaps also our limiting thoughts about what tarot is and how it should look. Um, our limiting thoughts about what we can see into the cards. B 
being able to combine what we know perhaps of the Empress and what we see in the card as well to do both an intuitive and a knowledge-based reading to break free. And I think this deck will force, well, will require the breaking free because we don't have scenes per se to give us intuitive hits as easily as some decks would give us. But the colors, the structure, the architecture, what would the people in this space be like? What would the person inside this space or inside this space be thinking, feeling? What would they be doing? How would you feel? What would you be doing in these spaces? I think that is the breaking free that this deck is asking us to do. Breaking free of the perhaps the barrier between us and the card putting ourselves in this, this deck, somewhat similar to the way that the Spacious Tarot asks you to come into the card and place yourself in the setting to read the card. So friends, let's break out of our, out of our prisons. Let's break out of our chains because we've put ourselves in and we can get ourselves out. Okay, so let's look at the court cards right now. Friends, this is what I get when I lay out the cards, the court cards, uh, from the top being the wands, then the cups, then the uh, swords, then the coins. Um, okay, so we can see that the kings are all... Uh, looking like they are interiors with windows looking out and the portrait of the king is on the window looking out. Uh, the queens are all, uh, they look like exterior, exterior gardens, yes? Um, with the queen's portrait being on the w garden wall. Um, and they look like, let's see, this looks like it has a pond. This definitely has a pond. Maybe they all have ponds. That might be a nod to the water element of the queens. Um, a lot of, when we look at court cards, we have the suits, which are could be fire, water, air, and earth. But also, the queens are also considered water elements to many. Uh, the pages are uh, earth elements. And there's controversy between, there are groups of people who see the kings as air and the knights as fire, and others who see the kings as fire and the knights as air. So anyways, I can, you can see water elements here in the queens. You can see in the pages, these are also exterior garden uh, element uh, looking uh, scenes. Um, yeah, these look like, you can see trees in the background. Now, for the knights, these also look like they are interior and they look like fireplaces. So perhaps this is the fire suit for this creator. Fireplaces, fire, maybe. Um, here we have the, I guess, a window into the external air of the outside. I guess that could be the an air quality to the kings in this deck. Um, now, looking laterally, do, do you see elements that resemble each other? Well, you see color, this color palette. Each color palette is similar for each of the uh, four suits. Um, but do we see similar elements? Like this red flower is similar in these two, but I don't see them here. These white flowers seem similar to me. These peacock feathers, peacock feather here. Yeah, I don't see uh, peacock feathers here. These cards definitely are going to take further observation. These red flowers here, but I don't see those red flowers there. So are there other elements? Do you see other elements which tie the four members of each of their suits together? that I'm just not seeing yet. If you see something, let me know in the comments below. And friends, 
Here we are, the Tildwick Tarot. As always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.